Ukraine's President Zelensky warns his troops not to take unnecessary risks in the recaptured territory of Kherson as Russian troops pull back across the Dnipro River. President Biden declares democracy the winner. The control of the U.S. Congress still hangs in the balance. His final results trickle in. The migrant ship, the Ocean Viking, heads to Marseille after not being allowed to fully disembark in Italy with 234 people on board. Russia's order to pull its troops out of Kherson, the only Ukrainian region capital it has captured in more than eight months of war, has prompted a warning from President Zelensky in his nightly address for emotions to be restrained. The enemy does not give us gifts, does not make gestures of goodwill. We fight for it all. And when you fight, the enemy resists, and always we lose the lives of our heroes. Therefore, we move very carefully, without emotion, without unnecessary risk. Earlier, his adviser, Mohailo Pudelyak, said in a tweet, actions speak louder than words and that so far there was no sign that Russia was leaving without a fight. It had been left to Moscow's top military to tell the Russian public via state-run television of the decision. If it is confirmed, it would undoubtedly be viewed by many as a setback. President Putin was nowhere to be seen. The retreat back across the Dnipro River was said to be down to logistical reasons. Supplying Russian troops was becoming impossible with continuous Ukrainian attacks. Abroad, U.S. President Joe Biden expressed a wait-and-see approach. It's evidence of the fact that they have some real problems, Russian, the Russian military, um, number one. Number two, whether or not that leads to, at a minimum, it will lead to uh, time for everyone to re recalibrate their positions over the winter period. Ukraine's military remains wary, believing any retreating Russian forces will most likely have left behind mines and booby traps. Well, today's announcement of Russia's withdrawal from the Kherson region, the right bank of the Kherson region, to the left bank of the Dnipro River, uh, is a major development in the war. Uh, it will liberate or free up approximately 4,000 kilometers, square kilometers of territory, uh, but perhaps most significantly, it will also mean that Russia will be withdrawing or retreating from uh, the, the right bank, the western half of Ukraine. Uh, they will have no presence there, uh, and they will also be leaving the only regional capital that Russia has been able to occupy since the invasion began almost nine months ago. So uh, it's a major breakthrough for Ukraine and a very significant setback for Russia. Well, there's been speculation of a, of a Russian retreat for some time now. Uh, Ukraine's tactics in this area is essentially a pocket or a bridgehead. Uh, Ukraine's tactics for some months now have been essentially to blockade the Russian forces there, to, to cut them off from resupply by bombing and destroying the bridges over the Dnipro River upon which they depended for their resupply. Uh, so this force, this Russian force, has been gradually finding itself more and more isolated. So speculation has been mounting for some time that at some point they would have to withdraw. Uh, now, exactly when that would be was open to question. Some felt it would come later in, the, in November or even December, maybe even in the new year. So it's probably very early, uh, but not totally unexpected. From a strategic point of view, it means an end to Russia's ambitions to move further along the coast towards Odessa, which is uh, Ukraine's perhaps second most important city after Kiev and the country's main port. Uh, the, the, that was one of the main targets of Russia's invasion since the beginning. So uh, that now is on the is, is on the shelf, as it were, is essentially ruled out for the foreseeable future. Uh, but I think it's far more important in terms of a symbolic or morale sense. Uh, this will have a huge impact on Russia, uh, a very negative impact, a demoralizing effect. Um, so the, the challenge for the Russians now will be to somehow um, regroup and uh, and solid solidify their lines of, of retreat and their defenses because Ukraine will now be looking to move on across the river and from the north to come down and push further against Russian forces. Obviously, they're going to be in a certain degree of disarray after what is a major retreat. So uh, it's a morale issue, and that will also be felt very much in Moscow. I think there'll be a lot of questions asked now about the conduct of the war and the way it's been handled. This is the latest in a series of defeats and perhaps the most humiliating of all. Control of the US Congress is still in the balance. Whichever party wins two of the three outstanding contests in Arizona, Georgia and Nevada 
will control the Senate. But it could be Friday before official results are in from both Arizona and Nevada. Georgia's tight race with neither candidate getting over 50 percent means it's headed to a runoff in early December. Despite the Democrats being set to lose the upper hand in the House of Representatives, it was an upbeat Joe Biden who congratulated Democrats as the results came in. When he emerged on Wednesday, he declared democracy the winner. Our democracy has been tested in recent years, but uh, with their votes, uh, the American people have spoken and proven once again that democracy is who we are. While the Democrats are relieved at their performance, Republicans think they should have done better. Donald Trump was among them when some of his chosen candidates fell short. Posting on social media, he acknowledged the results were somewhat disappointing, but said from his personal standpoint, it was a very big victory. For now, the waiting game goes on, with both parties having a lot to win and to lose. But one thing is clear, US politics remains as divided as ever. The European Commission calls in a statement for the immediate disembarkation at the nearest safe place of all migrants on board the Ocean Viking, a migrant rescue ship. Italian authorities have not allowed it to disembark fully. A statement on the Commission's website added, the situation must be urgently addressed to avoid a humanitarian tragedy. The Ocean Viking has now left Italian waters and is heading to Marseille in France following permission from Paris to disembark all 234 shipwrecked people on board. Meanwhile, on another ship, Gio Barents, run by the NGO Doctors Without Borders, 212 migrants who were previously not allowed to disembark as they were not considered vulnerable have finally come ashore. However, the case of Humanity One, with 35 people on board, has still not been given the clearance to fully disembark at the port. Catastrophic floods in Pakistan affected 33 million people earlier this year. The Premier of Pakistan told delegates at COP27 it is time for a climate change roadmap towards critical policy resets, which he said are needed in a world that is burning up faster than the capacity for recovery. All who have the power and financial muscle to change the course of history loud and clear. And that is what this conference is meant for. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now or never. For us, there is indeed no planet B. World leaders now hand over the summit to the negotiators to try to put the calls and claims into practical policies. But at the same time, there are efforts to make sure pledges made beyond the confines of the summit amount to real action. So-called climate greenwashing has been condemned by the UN chief. It's a practice of some companies promising net zero emissions, but without evidence to back up their claims. Some cynicism about whether these pledges are real, and the reality is there are some real challenges. So we're pretty clear on what you can't do. So if you, you cannot invest in new fossil fuel supplies. So if you say you're net zero, I'm high ambition on climate, you can't be continuing uh, to invest in, in new sources of fossil fuel supply, which is, is the problem. Um, two, uh, you have to cover all your emissions. Meanwhile, the presidents of Colombia, Venezuela and Suriname are backing a specific project, the protection of the Amazon rainforest. They've used the summit to call for a wide alliance to stop its deforestation. Europe has been hit by major strikes over the cost of living crisis. In Brussels, union-led protesters caused disruption in the heart of the countries and the EU's capital. The main trade unions joined forces to call for wage increases, with inflation hitting Belgium at its highest level since the mid-70s at 9.47%. It's a demonstration for purchasing power, for salaries, social benefits, everything that is blocked today. We are really living in a crisis situation. The crises are piling up and now it's really a shock. Even those from wealthier backgrounds are experiencing the current energy bill situation as a shock. Strike action has also caused headaches for commuters in Athens. Thousands of protesters marched through the streets of the Greek capital and the northern city of Thessaloniki 
as public and some private transport sector workers walked off the job for a 24-hour general strike against price hikes.